Howdy everyone, and today I'm taking a look at a brand new lens from Canon that's almost certainly destined to become very popular. The EFS 24mm f2.8 STM Pancake Lens. No prizes for guessing the unique selling point of this piece of kit. Its tiny size makes it one of the most portable and convenient camera lenses out there. Canon found a lot of success with their previous 40mm pancake lens, which fits both full-frame and APS-C cameras. This new, wider-angle 24mm version is an EFS lens, so it will only fit on Canon's generally less expensive APS-C cameras, like the 1200D, 700D, 60D, 70D or 7D series, and so on. This lens won't even physically fit on one of Canon's more expensive full-frame cameras. It has a fixed focal length of 24mm, which is the full-frame equivalent of 38.4mm. That's a fantastically useful wide-angle focal length, wide enough to give you the bigger picture and take in your surroundings, but not so wide that you have no emphasis on your subject. I think it's just about the best focal length for general purpose photography work. Unsurprisingly for a lens of its size, this piece of kit does not have image stabilization, so it's not going to be completely perfect for handheld video work. It has a maximum aperture of f2.8, which means that the lens can let in a reasonably good amount of light, about twice as much as a standard kit lens does at 24mm. Admittedly, many prime lenses do let in a bit more light than that, but f2.8 certainly gives you a helping hand for shooting indoors or at night time, getting you faster shutter speeds. An aperture of f2.8 can also give you slightly more out of focus backgrounds in your pictures, and it's always desirable to have that option. But because this lens has such a wide angle, you'll have to get quite close to your subjects to see what the bokeh looks like. This isn't really a great portrait lens. I got mine for about £170, which is good enough value for an f2.8 prime lens. However, in America, the lens is only £150, which is an outright bargain. Hopefully, the UK price will drop over time. Let's look at the build quality. Like its older 40mm brother, this pancake lens is very nicely built. It's obviously very small and light, but it feels nice and solid, especially being based around a metal lens mount. The narrow focus ring turns extremely smoothly and you can turn it at any time, although doing so will only change focus when the lens is actually set to manual focus. The ring is electronically coupled to the lens's focus mechanism, so it only changes anything when your camera is turned on. The lens's STM autofocus motor is very accurate, but not terribly fast, and it makes a very quiet buzzing sound in use. Here it is working while I record video. As you can see, the STM mechanism changes focus very quickly and efficiently. Thankfully, the motor's buzzing noise is barely audible, even on the camera's built-in microphone. Overall, the lens is built very nicely indeed, being small and handy, and working without any problems. Let's take a look at image quality. I'll be testing this lens on my 20 megapixel Canon 70D. In this case, I'm not using any chromatic aberration correction or peripheral illumination on a camera, because Canon haven't yet released the appropriate lens profile, so I can't. These are the results without any correction. At f2.8, the middle of the image looks nice and sharp. Not dangerously sharp, but still very good indeed. Contrast levels are decent, and colours seem to be quite neutral. In the corners we see a slight decline in resolution, but the picture is still fairly sharp. We can also see just a touch of green and purple chromatic aberration on contrasting edges, but really it's barely visible. Stop the aperture down to f4 and we see a lot more brightness and noticeably more sharpness in those corners. Stop down again to f5.6 for just about perfect image quality in those corners and back in the middle of the image too. That's as sharp as the lens gets. So overall, 
Canon have given us nothing really to complain about here. The lens is very sharp, especially when its aperture is topped down. Optical issues seem well corrected, and generally everything looks great. Let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. As you can see here, the lens shows just a little barrel distortion, which is typical for a wide-angle lens. You're unlikely to notice it often in your pictures. At f2.8, we see some quite evident vignetting, or darkness in the corners, but it falls quite gently across the picture frame, so it doesn't really make its presence felt in your everyday photos. Stop the lens down to f4, and that vignetting is virtually gone. So realistically, we're not seeing any major issues with distortion or vignetting. The lens can focus as closely as 16 centimeters from your subject, which is very close indeed, perfect for taking pictures of small subjects. At f2.8, the picture quality is very sharp, with a tiny further improvement at f4. That's a great performance. Incidentally, as with most lenses, you can use an extension tube to force the lens to focus even closer to your subjects. Here, I'm using a 20mm extension tube. Tubes have the most dramatic effect on wide-angle lenses, so, as you can see here, with the tube attached, the lens can actually focus closer than life-size. That's pretty amazing. Image quality with an extension tube is OK at f2.8 and sharpest at f4 or f5.6. So, if you want some dramatic macro pictures, try investing in a cheap extension tube to go with this lens. But don't use one that's longer than 25mm because the subject you're taking pictures of would actually have to be inside the lens itself to be in focus, which obviously won't work. For your interest, I'll be making a video about extension tubes in the near future. Anyway, let's see how the lens works against bright light. When the sun or any other bright light finds itself directly in your picture frame, we do see some quite major flaring. It looks pretty, but it is a technical issue. Finally, let's take a look at this lens's bokeh. As I mentioned, it's not easy to get an out-of-focus background with this lens, but if you do, the quality of those backgrounds generally looks fairly smooth. However, you can often see a little outlining on brighter points of light in the background. I'm nitpicking for sure, but it can be noticeable. Overall, this new pancake lens from Canon is a bit of a winner on all fronts. It's nicely built, it's decently sharp, and it has no particular optical problems, except for some ghostly vignetting. But your camera's peripheral illumination can deal with that, when Canon finally released the lens profile. The 24mm focal length is very useful, and the lens is also very good value for money, as well as being small, light, cute, and just plain fun. It makes your Canon digital SLR camera a lot more portable, and as the saying goes, the best camera to have is the one you have with you. It is quite a simple lens that won't exactly make your photography stand out from the crowd, but it might well enable you to simply get out with your camera more. Market appeal is seeping out of this lens's every pore. It's really well done and comes very highly recommended.